everybody knows about the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon. And it's a wonderful fantasy. My mother know? knows about the Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> exactly. That means everybody knows. And but. it's very uncomfortable when men come up at my signings and say, Hey, have you read that Fifty Shades? My wife loves it. So don't do that, please. I don't <laughs> want to know about they? your sex life. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I think it's taken some taboo off talking about that kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. more people are reading it. But I, I started to think, well, what if Christian really was in real life? Let's take the fantasy element out of it, you know? I think a big part of that is, for women, you know, Christian acts like a man so they can act like a woman. He's not going to ever leave his socks for her to pick up or, you know, things like or that. Or get sensitive. Exactly. So, you know, that is kind of a, a female fantasy in many ways. But I thought, what if this is an actual person, you know, who's controlling, who stalks her who you know does all this other stuff what would that look like and what would that feel like really you were sort of inspired by 50 Shades. i really was um 50 shades and tramadol um which is a, a pain reliever i <laughs> i slipped a disc in my back and oh. i started taking this I, I don't smoke cigarettes i've never done drugs you know i'm a real uh, girl scout about those things and when i started taking this narcotic it was like oh my god you know i had fever dreams and that's when the idea for Pretty Girls came. So I can actually know where the idea came from. You've never smoked pot? Never, no. Uh, well, I, pr I promise. Yeah, I, I believe promise. you. Caffeine's a drug. They're, exactly, they're yeah. All, that's about drugs. as hard as I get. And I don't even drink much alcohol. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty boring as an author. I'd rather have a cupcake. Why did that happen? Did you have a history of, uh, of addiction in your family? Well, my sister for many years was a drug addict. That certainly had something to do with it. But you know, I'm the Nancy Reagan just say no generation. In I high am too, school, but I didn't listen to her. <laughs> well, in high school, I had a couple of friends who smoked pot. One of them for the first time and had a psychotic break. Oh, well, that and that's be one yeah. Thing. And we could walk down the street to Grady Hospital, and the doctors would tell you that you know, th probably three or four times a month, they'll get in a teenager who smoked pot and had a psychotic break. And I, I've always felt creativity is kind of on the cusp of not psychosis, but you know, it, it's all in that same hemisphere. And I've never wanted to mess with anything that might hinder my creativity or change it or anything like that. So I don't want to alter that. So those rock stars and those writers who say they, you know, <laughs> knock back a couple of You know, of they, if it works for them, it works for them. And you know, if they can live past the age of 27 doing that, then I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, we've already done the yeah. 27, so we're- But you know, even uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, who died from his alcoholism, uh, he never wrote when he was drinking. He just stopped cold turkey so that he could write.